Hey everybody, Brandon here. I see Fungi. I'm gonna try to talk loud enough because there's a lot of fans with these flow hoods that'll drown my voice out. So what I have here is all those cordyceps you guys seen me gathering in pre previous videos. I found out an excellent way to store these things so they don't dry up as much. What I mean by that is I actually found this one right here last Friday. Usually they're dried up by now, so much so that it's really hard to get a tissue sample off of them. There's a couple of different ways I like to do this. So I'm going to, this, this has hydrogen peroxide in it. I'm just gonna dab a little bit of that in there. Kill off a little bit of the stuff. Okay. And then I'm gonna take a plate here and I'm just gonna swab it swab the spores onto the plate all right you can get a lot of junk on there by doing that but once you know what you're looking for you can kind of clean it up i'm gonna do that one more time with another one of these on the opposite side a lot of junk on here and i can see the peroxide just bubbling up now if you get a clean sample and you can keep it relatively clean like so if i had just one of these in here instead of several you know you, you may not need to do the hydrogen peroxide I've, there's been times where i haven't done it at all but you have enough room on these plates where you can do multiple samples and so i'll just get a good swab of that in a z-like pattern and i don't need to remember that one has the swabs but i can see it on there so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking some direct tissue samples. There's all kinds of ways you can do this stuff, uh, but this is normally how I do it. So I'll just show you what I do. You wanna get your blade, sterilize. Now, why I'm so excited about having these things not dried out even after days is because it is so hard to take a tissue sample directly when these things dry up so much. So I'm gonna try to bust this open a little bit with my hand here and get some of the fresh tissue that hasn't been exposed. It's really hard because these things are so thin, but I can see some right there and it just takes a tiny little piece. You don't need much. So I got some right here. Ideally, if I was doing this without the camera, um, I don't have a mask on right now. I wouldn't be talking. Uh, vectors of contamination, well, we're vectors of contamination. There's all types of vectors of contamination. And that's why I like to use auger because I can just clean it up. So let's take another tissue sample off the same one. I'm gonna try to get a little bit lower to the stem here. You absolutely can clone dried fruits. With these, you just wanna make sure you got a big enough fruit that once it's dried, you can still kinda break it up or rehydrate it and clean it up. You see, like it's um, pretty much tearing through. So I would imagine that this is gonna be some dirty samples, but it's just difficult when the specimens are so tiny. I'll still try to get a clean sample from the middle tissue though and not the outside tissue and there's a little piece right there okay so now i just basically repeat the process i have a lot of luck finding these in the mountains so in the mountains of the western carolinas whether i'm in the mountains of south carolina or the mountains of North Carolina, Cordyceps Militaris is out there and I find it easily uh, in moss and there are some lookalikes like the earth's tongue and uh, coral funguses but if you dig them up, you see that little tissue sample on there, if you dig them up they'll have the host attached like such and so that's a major identification characteristic and they also have these tiny little pores that you can see sticking out of them and some of the other ones they they will have that but um a lot of the coral funguses are smooth so they won't have as much of the pore um 
illustrations on the fruit body. Uh, just tearing this thing up here. I should have uh, flame sterilized my blade again before going to a new sample. But I'm just giving you guys the basic idea. I'll clean these up and do what I gotta do. From a harvesting standpoint, trying to gather these things out the wild, you're usually not gonna find enough to do anything with to make a difference. So a lot of these cordyceps are, they have a lot of water soluble compounds. So I mean, if you ever did find a bunch of them, you could just make a tea with it, but it's just not likely. It took me like four days to get four of these. So three days, cause it was over the weekend. There were a couple more out there, but I left them. Basically what I'm getting at is you can collect your samples from the wild. You can get your tissue, your library from nature directly, and then you just regrow it out. These things are really easy to grow. You just need to know what to put in there. And there's not much to it. So when they're regrown back out, they're regrown without the bug. And I did this last year and I still have the culture alive. I've been transferring it a bunch on the auger. Now with these, you, you've noticed I didn't put them in the peroxide. Um, I'm just trying to get a clean tissue sample out the middle. And we'll know, we'll know in about a week, sometimes just before then, they'll start to germinate. If there's any type of bacteria on here or contamination, they usually jump off a lot faster. Which is a little annoying, but these skills, you know, the fastest way to make money online is teaching people how to make money online. And it's just one big mess. Cause there's some truth in it, but a bunch of lies with some of the stuff that's peddled. Whereas this stuff right here, it's, it's for life. Once you know how to do it, it's your information. And can't nobody take that away from you. And you have it to share with others. And it's practical. You can actually use this stuff. You don't have to uh, have something where it's not going to work in a year. It's not going to work in two years. Yeah, the techniques are more refined. Yeah, new things are uh, 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 discovered. But for the most part, with this mushroom foraging stuff and this mushroom growing stuff, uh, once you got it, you got it. So this is the last one right here. I'm just kind of pulling it open to get some tissue out of the middle. And it's hard with these cordyceps. That's why once they've dried up, it's just even more difficult. But I've got a way now where they, uh, they just don't dry up as much. And I can make them last for a few days. So just put that on there. And once again, I'll put, I'll put two or three tissue samples on here. Just because uh, all you need is the initial germination and then you will transfer it to another plate to clean it up some more. I really don't like touching this stuff as much and I'm talking right over it. So I'm probably gonna have a little bit more contamination than I'm used to, but I just wanna show you guys a demonstration of you know how to start and what to do so that's a little bigger piece right there we'll just put it on there and that's it i'll uh, keep a few of these just in case they all fail <laughs> i still have some of my samples but uh the likelihood of that is just, uh, not high but it's a possibility so I'll still have these fruits around for maybe like a week or so, and then I'll continue to collect some out the forest as I'm out there. Anyways, I appreciate y'all's time. If you like this, if you if you appreciate my videos and that you find them helpful, definitely like and subscribe. I put a lot of time in this stuff, and it just gives me some feedback to let me know which areas I need to um, stay away from and where I need to go. And if you have any questions, definitely comment below, and I'll try to get those answers so get outside get in nature i see fun job you